Therefore, when the light circulates, the powers of the whole body arrange themselves before its throne. Just as when a holy king has taken possession of the capital and has laid down the fundamental rules of order, all the states approach with tribute. Or, just as when the master is quiet and calm, the men servants and maids obey his orders of their own accord, and each does his work. Let's talk for a minute about Elon Musk. Okay? Elon Musk has got I don't know, a bunch of things going on, but SpaceX and uh, Tesla are the two most popular, well known examples. Now, what's so special about these? What are they doing that makes them so successful that just one man? can disrupt two huge industries with very powerful incumbents. What he's doing is innovation. And not just innovation, but he's innovating in the most sensitive part, the most sensitive area, which is cost advantage of new technology. Well, let's look at SpaceX, for example. SpaceX, right now, has brought down the cost of launching stuff to orbit by a factor of 10. And as soon as he gets a little bit of momentum going, it's going to come down by a factor of 100. Now, whatever advantages that the incumbents in that field may have, they were there first, they have more contacts, they're bigger companies, and so on, is nullified by the fact that he can undersell them by 90%. I mean, that's huge. And what about Tesla? Tesla is doing a similar thing. He's using new technology to create a car that, for the same price, gives you just a tremendously better experience in every way. Sure, there are a few little problems in here, but basically, he's giving away a huge amount of technology, cutting-edge technology, that is simply not available anywhere else. Why? Because the incumbents, meaning Chrysler, Ford, GM, the European car companies, uh, they are invested in the old technology. They're invested in petroleum burning, earth polluting cars. And of course, their days are numbered. And we know about global warming. We have to do something about it. So they're history. But what are they doing? Just like the cigarette companies, they're trying to suppress the knowledge of this new technology. They're trying to make believe everything's okay, we don't have to change, you know. And nobody's buying it anymore. I mean, stupid people are buying it. <laughs> now, let's look at spirituality. By spirituality, I mean attaining enlightenment here and now, in this life, in this world. So that immediately cuts out all religions. All the religions are saying, no, no, there's no enlightenment in this life. You have to wait till you die. And then if you suck up to God and kiss his ass from now until then, maybe you get into heaven. And of course, the priest is the representative of God. So what it works out to is you become a slave of the priest. You become a slave of the religion. 
And then maybe you get what they promise later on. But you have to become a slave now. That's such a bad deal. I don't see why anybody falls for it unless they're born into it and they're just conditioned, hammered from the cradle. Huh? So this conditioning is a terrible burden. It has to be thrown off. How to throw it off? Well, you have to decondition yourself. So then we have the other spiritual paths, which are basically all variants of Buddhism, Buddha's teaching. In fact, Buddhism itself is a variant of the Buddha's teaching. <laughs> it's not at all the original teaching. Uh, and they themselves admit it. They say, well, we had to change to keep up with the changes in human society, but the problem is they haven't. Okay? Nobody is going to put their whole life on hold or throw away everything they've got and move into a monastery and serve a guru for the rest of their life. It's not going to happen. Maybe it's a few stupid people will do it. But nobody with any brains, nobody with any intelligence, nobody with any real opportunities in life is going to throw their life away to become a slave to some religious organization. Sorry. Now, that said, they do have some technology, and sometimes it actually works. <laughs> but the core technology hasn't been updated in thousands of years. I don't see how that can work very well. Because, yes, society changes and people change, and we need a new technology. So let's, let's put it in the car metaphor. Let's say you buy a car. You want a new car. So a delivery wagon comes to your house and unloads this huge crate, leaves it in front of your garage. Is it a car? No. It's a car kit. And you have to assemble it. And the instructions are very sketchy. Uh, just an outline. Oh, and by the way, you have to customize it also because no two drivers are alike. That means you have to customize the car to your particular preferences and needs. And, oh, by the way, there's no documentation on how to do that. <laughs> I mean, it's ridiculous, okay? The products that were being offered by religion is just hopelessly outdated. And the ones that were being offered by spirituality are either stupid, like New Age nonsense, huh? or they're uh, purposely made less powerful, as in the case of Buddhism, where there's so much cruft and, and crap and extraneous garbage now accumulated around the core teaching that it doesn't work anymore. In fact, you probably, if you accept the instructions of a typical Buddhist teacher nowadays, you will spend your whole life on the very beginning of the path. And guess what? You, you won't get it right. <laughs> so I was in Thailand and I was in Sri Lanka studying the Buddhist teaching. And the number of realized monks, I mean, really, you can count them on the fingers of one hand. Very, very rare. And when somebody does become realized, then, of course, they're immediately attacked politically by the scholar monks who want to maintain monopoly on Buddha's teaching. And, of course, anyone who becomes enlightened is extremely threatening to them because they're not. And they admit they're not. And they also say nobody else can become enlightened. Wrong. But you have to understand how Buddhist teaching works because nobody's going to tell you that. They're just going to load you up with a bunch of crap, a bunch of bullshit that gets in your way. So what's the advantage of a path like the secret of the golden flower? 
It has no institutional baggage. Nobody owns it. Nobody claims it. Nobody has made it into an organization. Yet, it's extremely powerful, effective, and fast. A hundred days. If you practice this teaching for a hundred days, you will get at least stream entry, which is first level enlightenment. How can I say such an outrageous thing? I did it. It happened. I experienced it myself. I mentioned back in the beginning, I heard a few discourses from this series, The Secret of Secrets, from Osho back in 1978 in Pune. And then later on, when he came to Oregon, I started studying it intensively, practicing it too. And of course, doing all the other Osho meditations and all that, living in the commune and all that. And then I left. Why did I leave? To have my alone time. And I went to my apartment and I practiced this method for about you know, 50 or 60 days and I got stream entry. I didn't know it at the time because I didn't have much background in the Buddha's teaching. But later on, when I actually studied the sutras, I found out that's what it was. And as soon as I did that, I got back all of the abilities and the states of consciousness associated with it. So, what you're being told by Buddhist, Buddhist teachers is a bunch of crap designed to obstruct your progress and keep you dependent on them for the rest of your life. So naturally, they hate people like me who cut through the crap, get to the essence, realize the whole thing, and then say, hey, anybody can do this. There's nothing special about me. I'm a completely ordinary guy, a musician from New Jersey. I got a thick New York accent, you know. I talk out of the side of my mouth. But I realized all four paths by following this method. So, you can too. And it only takes a maximum of 100 days of intensive practice. 100 days is nothing. There's an old Chinese saying, life is divided into, the life of an adept, the life of an enlightened one, is divided into three periods. The first one, read 10,000 books. Read everything there is to know on enlightenment. Two, sit 10,000 days. 10,000 days is about 27 years. In fact, it's almost exactly a cycle of Saturn. And three, walk 10,000 miles. What does that mean? Once you realize enlightenment, you have a lot of work to do. <laughs> enlightenment isn't the end, it's only the beginning of the real work, which is helping others to attain. Bodhisattva. So, once you become uh, stabilized in the new state of consciousness, of realization, then the thing to do is to help others attain the same. Now, if what used to be done in 10,000 days can be done in 100 days, that means an increase by a factor of 100 in the efficiency of the process. That, folks, is breakthrough technology. That is enough to offset the advantages of the incumbents, like the religions and Buddhism, various flavors, and deliver a superior product for much less cost investment. That, folks, is the bomb. That's why we call this the boom. <laughs> I love Peter Sellers. <laughs> so, that's the boom. That you don't have to spend your whole life to become enlightened. You can spend just a few years doing the preparatory work 
and then a few days doing the actual intensive work under the guidance of a realized person. And then you get it. And that's it. Go on your way. Walk your 10,000 miles after that. Because now you have the best thing that life can offer. Enlightenment. So, why am I going through all this trouble to uh, prepare the ground, to create a context in which this understanding can be transferred to you? Because I can see how I reached the goal. It's just like we use the example sometimes of someone who uses a ladder to climb up on the roof. So if you're up on the roof and somebody comes along and says, hey, how do I get up there? You say, oh yeah, check out that ladder. Try that ladder. Right? What else is there to do? Huh? It would be mean to hide the ladder or burn it or haul it up on the roof and keep it out of everybody's reach. But that's what the that's what the monks are doing. Huh? They're cheating you. And anybody who doesn't cheat you, they try to suppress and attack. Like the violence that happened to me in Nepal that was organized by the Buddhists. So we're not doing anything differently because of their bullshit. In fact, it only made us stronger because now we have something against them and we can prove it. So I left India about a week ago. And since then, I've been consulting with my business partners. And we have come up with a plan. And the plan is like this. The plan is to offer online courses. We already have a bunch of videos. They can be made into proper courses and offered at a very low price on the internet. And then as an extra added uh, or deluxe uh, service, then I will be available for consultation on Skype. It's going to take a little while to set this up, you know, it requires some, some work. Meanwhile, you just have to put up with me on these videos. <laughs> so that will allow people to prepare themselves and get right view. Because remember, without right view, you're not going to attain anything. So people who have no idea how this teaching works can never get the benefit because everyone's enlightenment is unique and different. So you have to know how to solve these problems independently. Of course, we'll be available to advise, but still, when the rubber meets the road, when you're in meditation and something comes up, you have to know how to deal with it. There's no time to make a phone call. So, after enough people become qualified by attaining right view, we're going to have a retreat 100 days to enlightenment, probably during the European holiday in the summer. That way people can get away. It won't take 100 days, believe me. If you're properly prepared, it can happen very fast. So uh, people will come, and let's say if we can get 100 people to come, even if only 10 of them actually make it, that's huge. It's a huge increase in the efficiency of the enlightenment process that is a total competitive breakthrough with regards to enlightenment uh, taught by anybody else. Everybody else is saying it takes years. Mm -mm. Days. Then, those people who actually do make it, we want to form a research and development group to decrease the time even further. I have a gut feeling, I have an intuition, that by using, for example, electroencephalograms, the electrical measurements of the 
of brain activity that we can identify with, you know, within a reasonable range of error where somebody is on the consciousness scale. And once we do that, we have a feedback mechanism that will tremendously increase the efficiency of the process even more. I think with a full application of technology, we can increase the efficiency by a factor of a thousand. What does that mean? 10 days. Can you afford 10 days? Yes. Yes. If you can afford to see this, if you can afford a computer and all the other stuff you need to watch this, you can afford 10 days out of your life to become enlightened. And it can be done. I'm convinced of it. My experience is the proof. So, that's the bomb. We want to make it possible for everyone to experience enlightenment in this lifetime. And we're going to do it. And in the process, we're going to blow away every other spiritual path on the planet.